In this video, we're going to use live data in Model View View Model to listen to updates from Cloud Firestore. Now, a quick refresher on how Cloud Firestore and Firebase in general works. One really nice thing is that if we make an update from one device into the Firestore, it will replicate that across other devices and even the device that sent the data in the first place. The value of this is quite incredible when you think about the work it would take to do this manually, and indeed that's what we had to do before we had cloud-based options. Now a quick reminder on how Cloud Firestore works. Cloud Firestore is a newer version of data storage on Firebase. Originally Firebase launched with what was called the real-time database. Cloud Firestore, just a little different structure. We start with a root object. From that we have a collection, in this case it's specimens. Each of those represents a different document, which is a specimen. And then those documents can have further collections, in this case photos, and those collections will be linked to, guess what, even further documents. The documents that we're talking about here are typically in JSON syntax, so we're not thinking binary objects, we're more or less thinking data. So here's what we're going to do. We need a DTO, we already have that, we just need to add a two-string method. We need a UI component that can accept a collection, and in our case we're going to use a spinner, something that we already put on our user interface. Now we need a Cloud Firestore instance. We created that in the previous video in this playlist. And we also need a view model that will handle our live data. So let's get started. This is the layout for the fragment that we're currently using. I'm going to zoom up a little bit so that you can see that we have latitude and longitude. And then we have the spinner component called SPN Specimens. It's kind of like a combo box would be in the old days. It's a predefined list of items that a user can scroll through, typically with a gesture. So just at one of our UI components, if you search spinner, you can see it here. We already added it, so won't worry too much about it. The neat thing about Android is we can put objects directly into that spinner and the user will see the objects and what the user will see is the result of the two string method on those objects. So what our goal is, is we're going to take our Firebase data and populate a series of objects and put them into the spinner. The idea is every time our Cloud Firestore updates, our spinner will update automatically in very near real time. So the specimen object is one that we created previously, and we simply need to add a two-string method, and we'll have that return our plant name. We could add a few other things as well. Why don't we go ahead and say plant name, and then we'll say latitude and longitude. So that way we can make sure that our plants are unique. Notice I'm using a little syntax here that we can use in Kotlin where if I want to return a string and I want to put variables into that string, I simply preface the variables with a dollar sign and those will be inserted automatically into the string and it will honor white space or any other plain text that I want to put here and simply substitute in those variables. A nice and quick string. As a matter of fact, maybe I can add description as well. We could go, we could add any of these fields that we want, but I think that'll work for now. Okay, so we have our DTO created, we have our two string overridden, and the next thing that we want to do is take a look at our main view model. We already did some setup in our previous video where we created our Firestore instance, and we also added any settings, and then we also did the save function where we're saving our specimen to Firestore. Let's add a new function. Let's say listen to specimens. Hold enter, create function. Now this is where I'll put a little I'll put a little documentation over here. Uh, this will hear any updates from Firestore. Okay, listen to specimens. First of all, I'm going to say Firestore dot collection because remember that we start with a collection. The collection hangs right off of our root, so here's our root, and then our collection is called specimens. So we want to say I want to use the specimens collection. One nice thing is we can listen to just about any level of Firestore. So we can listen to the specimen level, we can listen at the document level. If that document has a further collection like photos, we can listen at that level, so on and so forth. So we can get fairly fine-grained, we just have to tell it where we want to start listening. In this case we're saying, let's listen to specimens. Now I'm going to add a snapshot listener, and what that means is anytime the data changes, the snapshot listener will be informed. So add snapshot. Okay. Now we have an open and closed curly, which is where we're going to do our work when the data changes. This is going to be a lambda expression that has two different parameters. First of all, the snapshot, and then next, any possible exception. 
So you see comma separated, and then we use our lambda parameter to body separator, which is the, the dash and the greater than symbol. And now we can start doing some work. First of all, if there is an exception, we want to skip. So we're going to use a bit of an interesting syntax here. What we're going to do is say if e is not equal to null, that means there's an exception that has occurred. Then let's do a log. So we'll say log, uh, and we'll just say warn, and tag listen failed, and we'll pass in the exception that occurred. Go ahead and import our tag, like so. Now, here's a little trickiness with Kotlin. We're in a lambda, remember. I want to return out of this because I have an exception. I don't want to continue working. But the trick is, I don't want to return from the listen to specimens function entirely. I only want to return from this add snapshot listener lambda that I'm in right now. So in Kotlin, we can return from a specific lambda, lambda if we specify it either with a label or just by its name. We do that like so, return, and then you see it gives me a hint here, at add snapshot listener, that means return from this lambda, not the entire function. And okay, don't worry, we're still listening for other updates, we're just going to ignore this one. If we are here, we did not encounter an exception. That means there's a good chance we have some data we can work with. Let's just verify, we'll say if snapshot not equal to null, now, we have a populated snapshot. Now, by the way, I, you see I comment a lot when I'm doing these demos. That's not typical for me or for anybody w within a function, but it's easy to lose place here with the syntax, which is why I comment so that you can kind of step back if you want and see what I was doing, see what my, my thought was. First of all, let's say snapshot dot documents. So notice documents indicates that this is a list. Uh, and so we'll say val documents equals snapshot dot documents. So a collection of specimens. Now documents, because this is a collection and because it's Kotlin, we can do a very simple for each loop. We just say documents dot for each. That allows us to iterate over all of these documents. Why do we want to iterate over the documents? We'll take a look at the iteration variable here, the IT variable. You see it's a variable of type document snapshot. That's not what we want to deal with. We want to deal with specimens, which is the actual data under the covers. We're going to convert each of these documents to specimens. We can simply say IT, note again, that's our iteration variable, and it says document snapshot, IT dot to object, then we need to give it a type. Specimen, remember that, where we just put our two string, colon colon class dot Java in Kotlin. This is how we specify a type. So now that we've converted it from a document snapshot to an actual specimen, we can add these specimens to a collection. Let's go ahead and define a collection above this iteration. We'll say val all specimens equals array list and then specimen. Once again, remember that specimen object where we just added that two string. Now let's return to this IT variable where we're essentially casting it to a specimen. Let's assign that to a variable val specimen equals lowercase s and specimen there equals it2 object do a quick null check if specimen does not equal null and let's add it to our collection all specimens dot add and then specimen since we've just done a null check i'm going to add the double exclamation which means i'm asserting that i know this is not null and i'm willing to take that risk i feel safe there because we have done the null check so at the end of all of this, we have a collection of specimens. And what we can do is expose that with live data. So let's make a lot, let me just clean up a little bit here. And now let's make a live data object towards the top, immutable live data. So we'll say private var underscore specimens. And you see it's going to follow the syntax of line number 14 pretty closely. Instead of plants though, this is specimens. So a plant in my world is the scientific de definition of a plant, something that's a genus, species, cultivar, has a native area, so on and so forth. Where a specimen is a physical plant that I can touch. So we kind of think of a one-to-many relationship between plant and specimen. So private var specimens is that we'll make it a mutable live data and an array list of specimen objects. Remember that mutable live data means that we can append to it, we can change it. Let's go ahead and instantiate this mutable live data 
array list specimen. So mutable live data means that we can change it and it can be observed by somebody else. That's wrapping a collection of specimen DTOs. Now we go back to our snapshot where we were working just a moment ago. And let's say underscore specimens. And we could normally say put value or set value or just use a convenience uh, term here, specimens.value equals all specimens. I realize we have several curlies here, so pay special attention to where we are. All specimens is within the scope of our curly. So we have open curly and closed curly. That's probably one of the most important things is that make sure we can see all specimens. And we are after the documents dot for each, which is where we're doing this essentially cast of each of the component documents to specimen. This is where we want to put our assignment. Now, by the way, this is the best way I could think to take a collection of document snapshots and convert it to an array list of specimen objects. And that is iterate through each one of them and perform to object. If you know a better way, by all means, let me know. Just say something in the comments. I did a bit of research and this is the most efficient way that I could find. Nonetheless, one more thing that we want to do and then we're ready to go back to our fragment. Specimens with an underscore is private and that's often how we do encapsulation in Kotlin. And then what we'll often also do is create an internal or public variable that exposes this to the outside world. Internal means it's visible within our module. Public means it may be visible outside of our module. Internal's fine with me. So internal var specimens type mutable live data array list specimen. And then we simply give it a getter method and we say return our private variable specimens and a setter method. And then we just simply give that an assignment. Just like so. Very similar to what we did not long ago with our uh, plants where we are declaring kind of like a field or a type and then we give it a getter and setter and shortcut notation right underneath. And with that our view model is complete. Let's go ahead and go back to our main fragment. Now if we look here we actually don't have a whole lot to do here. Just a couple of lines. We can model what we did when we had our autocomplete plant name observe on the plants live data. Now, what do I mean by that? You remember that the autocomplete text means that the user can start typing and it will filter a predefined list based on what the user has typed. With a spinner, it's a very similar concept. Just the user is scrolling through predefined options. Both of these are using some predefined options. It's just a matter of how the user interacts with them. So very similar. So let's say view model. You notice that we have this specimens attribute available to us, not the underscore specimens because that's private, but rather this internal specimens that has a getter and setter that returns the private specimens to us. So view model dot specimens dot observe. Then we give it the parameter this for the current object and then we pass in an observer that we're just going to create on the fly here. So observer open curly, close curly. Take a look at the IT variable for this. So it's saying that, okay, what you have available to you is an array list of specimens. So from here, we simply need to update the spinner to tell it to use this array list of specimens in its model. Specimens, which is our parameter, the one that we're referring to here. I suppose we could just use IT as well, but we'll do it like so. Specimens, SPN specimens, array adapter, and then context, bang bang, to say we we're going to assert it's not null. R dot layout dot support simple drop down spinner drop down item, and then our collection specimens. Uh, oops, I missed one part here. SPN specimens dot set adapter. There we go. So you see, it's almost identical to what we did above. Little goofy syntax, but what we're doing is we're saying take our specimens object, give it this predefined list. What predefined list? Well, we have to pass it an array adapter, where an array adapter takes a collection and makes it available to the user interface. In that array adapter, we pass the context and we assert it's not null. The context describes our application, gives it any kind of information about our application, its sandbox, and where it's living. The layout just says, how do I want to present each of these specimen objects? We can define a custom layout. We could even maybe put a picture in there, something like that. But for our case, support simple spinner dropdown item means just call the two string and just show it as text. And then finally, what collection do we want to use as our predefined list? 
we want to use the specimens collection, where the specimens collection is what we're observing on right here. So I know it's a little back and forth, but hopefully that helps to clear it up. With this, let's take a look. First, we'll watch this run in real time without the debugger so that we can see the interaction between Firebase and our application. After that, we'll take a look at running it with the debugger engaged so that we can watch things at our own pace. I've started up the emulator and good news. Look at when I click on the spinner, we see four items, an Eastern Red Cedar, Eastern Red Bud, Southern Bush Honeysuckle, and Northern Pecan. And if you take a look in Firebase, we have those same four records. So sure enough, when it updated, when it started, it was able to get all of these items. Now, let's change one of these. So let's change Northern Pecan. Let's change that to Northern Catalpa. You notice it's changed over here. Now let's take a look at our spinner. Holy smokes, look how fast that was. You see Northern Catalpa updated on our user interface as soon as it updated over here in Firebase. Let's add one more document. Let's go ahead and add a new one. So we'll say auto ID. Now the trick is here, if we're adding it manually, we have to remember what our DTO looks like. We could also save a DTO from our Android device, which is a better way to do things because then we're saving it directly. But here we can use the web console to do the same thing. I'll pause the video for just a moment. This will take just a second. Now take a look at the fields that I've entered manually here. Plant name, latitude, longitude, description, plant ID, specimen ID. And you'll notice that matches pretty closely to the names and the syntax, the capitalization that we have in specimen. So it should be fairly like for like. If we happen to misspell something, we might get an exception on the client side that says, I don't know how to map this, especially around the types. That, that's where it is a little bit finicky. If we miss one, no big deal. It typically can understand, provided that our constructor has given all of these attributes a default, which we have done. So you notice each of them has a default value. Okay, now once again, I go back. I haven't hit save yet. Let's just do a before and after. I click on the spinner, you see five items. Now watch what happens when I choose save. We get a new item here. Let's go back to our spinner. And what do we have? Firewood, the national plant of Greenland at 64 degrees latitude. You notice that was very quick. Uh, we're looking at the Firebase console through a browser here. That is not living on my computer. That's living somewhere that in a farm that Google owns. On the other hand, this emulator that we have here is living on my computer. So that was a complete round trip from this browser to Firebase all the way back to my emulator in just a matter of seconds. Now let's slow it down and take a look at the debugger. I've set several breakpoints on our listener method. And gosh, you know, looking at some plants that I GPSed in Greenland, looks like I got that longitude a bit wrong. The latitude, I was pretty close at 60, but the longitude should really be minus 46. And by the way, this is the fireweed, and this is the fireweed in Greenland. A uh, fun trip I had this year. A beautiful flower, too. Oh, there's a good one. I really like that one. Okay, nonetheless, let's see. This one is longitude minus 51. So let's return to our Firebase console and longitude. We're going to change this to minus 51.04, something like that. As soon as I choose update, we should see my debugger hit. And sure enough, there we go. If I go to my task manager, you see the debugger is hit. And so it's been notified that there is a change. So the listen to specimens, add snapshot listener is now alive. Did we get an exception? Well, E is null, that's great news. So we're gonna skip over this and we're going to go right back down to our snapshot here. You see, we have a query snapshot. And now we initialize our collection of specimen objects. It's going to be empty until we populate it in the for each loop. Now we get our documents from our snapshot. The snapshot is what our Firestore looks like at the moment. We have five items starting with zero and going to four. Let's go ahead and F8, get that out of the way, and F8. And finally, we now have a collection of specimens. Let's look at our collection of specimens, and here's our fireweed plant of Greenland. And sure enough, you notice that it grabbed this update and it updated it to a longitude of minus 5104. I go ahead and choose F9. And what do we see in our spinner? Fireweed, the plant of Greenland, 64, 5104. So in this video, we took our DTO, we populated a spinner with a DTO by listening to Cloud Firestore and by using view model and live data. We witnessed the ability of Firestore to take updates and populate those to our device in near real time. The update in our case happened from a web console, but it could have happened if we hit save just as well.
So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.